Ireland has a very special relationship with water. It rains somewhere in Ireland two days out of three. And we've 70,000 kilometres of river channel flowing through the land. We're lucky in Ireland that we're awash with water. But we struggle to deliver a safe and reliable water supply. Our modern lives are defined by the free flow of water. Turn a tap, we expect water to gush forth. Flush a loo, we expect wastewater to magically disappear. Our homes and our businesses rely on a constant, clean and efficient supply of water. But as we're about to see, despite all the taxes we've paid towards it over the years, Ireland's water system leaves a lot to be desired. The people of Boyle, County Roscommon, know exactly how broken the water system is. On and off for several years, cryptosporidium has infested supplies of drinking water. Despite living on the banks of a beautiful river, people have to either boil or buy all the water they use for essential things like drinking, washing fruit and veg, and cleaning teeth. Hello, can I interrupt you there? Oh, hello, how are you? I see you've got water. Oh, jeepers. I think that's obvious, isn't it, you've got water? Excuse I've, me, sorry about that. I've got a heavy load here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I mean, are you, is this for your home? This is for my home, I live on my own, and unfortunately I have to buy this much every week. Right, and this is for going on for how long? Oh, we've had this in Boyle now, this year since last May, but we've had it previously, each year for a number of years previously, where we've had Boyle water notices in force. This is purely for drinking. Right. You're on the water thing today. Yeah, we're doing a programme on about water and the issues of water. Yeah. Right. Do you think this is right that we have... Such Absolutely wrong, because we have lots of rain coming down, there's lots of way of saving water. And uh, if they don't do something about it, I think people will get very annoyed. And it's costing quite a, a lot of money. Right, mm -hmm. it must be. And I mean, for example, these ones now, how much would these cost? You get two for a fiver. This is five litres, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's five litres and two for a fiver. So, right so you buy four for yourself for a week? That's it. So that's yeah. five or a week? That's it. If I had a family of three now, I'd be buying three times, four times that. I'd have a wife and three kids, let's say. Four times that, which would be 20 euros a week, which is a thousand a year. A thousand a year? Yeah. And do you know people that have got sick from water here? Oh, we all had a little touch of the, the sickness. Yeah. I can assure you that before I started buying water here, I spent two days in bed with raging stomach pains, went to the doctor, and he says, it's the water. Right. And I mean, for example... In 2012, 50,000 households all around Ireland were on boil water notices. But cleaning up their water supply is only a part of the challenge. In late 2013, one million Dubliners also discovered how cracked the Irish water system is. Water restrictions are in place tonight across Dublin and parts of Kildare and Wicklow because of production problems at the capital's largest water treatment plant. Restaurant owners across the city have also been preparing for expected disruption to their services. For many, this isn't the first time they've had to make contingency plans because of water shortages. It came as a shock that even after months of heavy rain, the city's water supply nearly ran out. Currently, there is only 1% difference in the supply and demand of water in Dublin, compared to 15% in most other European cities. So even on a normal day, there is barely enough water to keep the city going. When catastrophe strikes, the whole city suffers. We need water to flush our toilets, we need water to wash our hands, we need water to wash our vegetables, to prepare our food. We need water to cook, we need water to make our stews. We're in the hospitality industry. One of the eight jobs in this country is in hospitality. If we have no water, we can't be hospitable. You can't serve. Like, I pay about 2,000, 2,500 in water rates a year. My, I'm, I'm metered, 
I'm taxed on my water that I received, and rightly so. People should pay for water because it is a commodity and it's very precious, and you know that when you don't have it. Uh, you can't run a business without it. Like two years ago, we had to go for four weeks without water at Christmas time because of the snow. It's a disaster waiting to happen all the time, and there is no plan B. Service. Downstairs, Podrick has another water problem to show me. Yeah, we seat about 45, 50 people down here. It's, uh, it's right. full every evening, thanks be to God. Yeah, yeah. Can't complain about that, but we have a, a surprise underneath the floorboards here. Right, now this yeah. is about four metres under the street. Yeah? yeah, right under the street. Okay. For 15 years, water has been leaking into his basement. He has to run a pump 24 hours a day to keep the place from flooding. Uh, this so leaks. it's drinking water, basically. It's drinking water. It's tap water, water. Coming, pipe water coming from cracks out in the streets. Yeah. If you didn't have a pump here, what would happen? Within a day, it would be up to about there, about right. a foot up. And this is going I've had this floor replaced twice. I mean, that means all of these pipes probably down here are all in poor condition. This is one we can see. You know, you're, you're able to see it. It's, it's visual. This has gone on over the city. Unfortunately, our networks are in relatively poor condition. We've inherited a system of pipes that goes back to the 19th century in some cases. So we have quite a poor pipe network compared to other countries. We estimate currently about 40% of total water produced is lost. Work has begun in the last few years to address the problem. Teams of engineers are surveying the streets of Ireland's cities and towns, searching for leaks. There's a leak down there, so maybe, maybe we'll try and fix that. We caught up with them in Dublin. Having identified streets with particularly bad leaks, they dig up the old pipes. So, Ronan, how big is this job now of replacing all our water pipe systems in the country, especially in the Dublin area? This is a massive job, Tom. It has taken, you know, 100 years to lay these water mains, and we now have to replace a big chunk of them now in order to get the leakage down. The pipes aren't just leaking water, they're leaking money. Millions has been spent on energy and purifying the water before it even reaches these pipes. That money is going down the drain. If you think about it, we take raw water, we treat it, it's expensive to treat it, and 40% of it leaks into the ground. That wouldn't happen in any other industry, that 40% of your product goes down the drain. It's a waste. When the engineers dig up the old pipes, they often find them filled with detritus, much of which is a build-up of rust. So that's what your water is running through, basically. That's the condition of the, of the mains that we're renewing. It's, that's mild. We've, we've come across a lot worse depending on the age of the pipe and the, the condition of the area. The old pipes are being replaced with heavy-duty polyethylene piping that, that will last at least another century. Well, over the next 10 years, we need to replace about 1,000 kilometres of water mains, and at an estimate, now this is only an estimate, it will be 300, 400 million euros to do that amount of work. So it's, it requires huge investment, huge planning. There's a logistical issues with, you know, disruption to traffic to customers and so on. You do possibly um, 50 kilometres a year, 60 kilometres a year, but when it gets beyond that, it's getting to a stage where there's just too much going on. You're interfering with the traffic, you're interfering with people's lives too much. And nationally, Cork, Galway, Galway Limerick, similar, all over the country. All over the country. I will assume that those town centres are the same as Dublin and they need to have investment as well. It's all the box kind of job. The cost of fixing leaks in the pipe network will run to billions of euro. The more I talk to experts, the clearer it becomes that this is only the tip of the iceberg. So we're replacing what today is 70 metres of pipe today, isn't it? 70 metres of yes. pole. We're getting rid of 70 metres of old cast iron mains. That's right. But in total, we've done 160 kilometres to date, and then still more to do. Yeah. Ireland's sewage treatment system is also in a woeful condition. However, taking a more holistic and ecological approach can help reduce costs substantially. For millions of years, Mother Nature has naturally filtered rainwater through gravel and clay and through river systems, producing water so pure that in past decades, we could drink it safely from all our rivers. 
The problem is that as we humans have grown in our ability to thrive on this planet, we've also grown in our ability to pollute it. These days, drinking water straight from a river is definitely not advisable. Inland Fisheries Ireland, the body responsible for patrolling our rivers and protecting fish stock and ecosystems, have a keen understanding of the value of keeping water clean from source to sea. Last year, Inland Fisheries Ireland commissioned an economic study of recreational angling in Ireland, and it's worth about 755 million to the economy annually. 755 million? Hu yeah. That's a lot of money. It's quite a lot of money. So Fiona, what are the main sources of pollution, contamination of the rivers? It varies a lot, Duncan. 50% um, is, is due to point sources. So you have industry, wastewater treatment plants. Um, the other 50% is diffuse pollution. So it's agriculture, maybe animal slurry, you know, one-off houses, things like that. And what happens when they enter the water? they cause bacteria to grow and that causes um, a deoxygenation of the water and in catastrophic event fish will be killed. It's not only fish that suffer from polluted water. Birds and mammals that feed on them are also affected, as are precious insects and invertebrates on which fish and birds feed. Fiona believes we should see our rivers as integrated ecosystems. I think we have to be responsible. We have to take responsibility for our actions. You know, what you do upstream affects downstream. You know, if you do something in your backyard, it has a knock-on effect downstream. Fiona's vision reflects the most up-to-date thinking on water management. Sadly, there are only a handful of people in Ireland charged with implementing this new approach. Among them is Ray Spain, director of the Southeastern River Basin District project. Traditionally, we looked at rivers, I suppose, in our local authority areas, per county or in our parishes, right? And what's changing is that we now realise we need to look at the river as a whole. You know, right from its source, which can be in a totally different county, in a totally different area, geographical area, as it flows down through the various counties. And a lot of our population in the country actually lives downstream. So we really have to be conscious of all our catchments and the smallest streams right up to the bigger rivers. Uh, to demonstrate what he means, Ray brings me to like Castletown this. Village oh, in County nice Leash. Like Fish, uh, Their sewage treatment plant is old and primitive. At times of pressure, during heavy rains, for example, it discharges raw sewage untreated straight into the nearby River Nore. Ireland has a total of 2,000 sewage treatment plants. The bad news is that a large proportion of them are in this condition. So this is um, one of our uh, old plants, which would be typical of an overloaded plant. Pretty um, bad, is it? Pretty bad, yes. So this water is going straight out into the, the river now. It, it, it can at times, yes. You can get an overflow, especially after heavy rain, you will get a flush through. We have to ask ourselves whether this kind of system is acceptable in the 21st century. We walk down to the River Nore, and there I find a sight that fills my heart with delight. Oh, look, look at here. Wow! Yes. Wow! The, the inland fisheries. There's a big... Did no, you see I him? Saw him. Yeah. Fantastic! Oh! Wow! <laughs> it's a magnificent sight. But all I can think of is what damage Castletown sewage is having on these beautiful salmon. And the local people who live here. This is the locals here. This is their picnic area. This is where their kids come to swim and come to play in the water. Do they want to do that in dirty water, Duncan? The sewage flows downstream from Castletown to towns including Duro, Kilkenny and Thomastown. I wonder how the people of those towns feel about that. We travel 10 miles up the road to Port Leash to see the kind of solution that we need all over the country. Right, Duncan, it cost 30 million euros to put this plant in place five years wow. ago here. 30 million? 30 that's million. that's for a population yeah. of how many people? F serving a population of 39,000 population 40, equipment million. here. 40,000 people, million. that's yes. what it costs. <laughs> yeah. 
You have a very modern plant here, Duncan. We have an inlet screening works. We have primary treatment, aeration, settling, and tertiary treatment after. We're producing a fantastic quality of the effluent here. So it's 30 million. Is that the sort of money we're going to spend all over the country and all of our towns? I'm afraid that's what's needed. And every plant that isn't performing, isn't performing up to standard, we need to spend money, put resources into that plant. Extrapolating from these costs on a very crude estimate, it would cost over 3 billion euro yes. to replace the sewage treatment plants alone. But that's the kind of investment that is required. The wastewater produced by the new plant in Port Leash is so clean that it has virtually no impact on the small river trio into which it is released. Four years ago, this river was an open sewer. There was no fish, there was no flora, no fauna, there was no life in this river at all. And now the Q value has gone from Q value one, as I said, up to Q value three to four. There's fish now spawning in this river, which never happened before. The change to the river trio has been dramatic, and yet it barely makes a dent to the quality of the water of the river barrow into which this tributary flows. Well, the new wastewater treatment plant in Port Leash has made huge improvements to the river. But now I'm 30 kilometres south, downstream, at a Thai, and I still can't drink this water. And that's because of all of the other sources of pollution that are contaminating the river catchment. And that's costing us all a lot of money. Yes, we're very concerned that in a number of cases where infrastructure has been put in, the expected improvement in the water quality hasn't materialised in all cases. Stopping raw sewage flowing into a river is a positive step. But on their own, plants like this won't solve the problem. The issues and the pressures are quite complex from agriculture, forestry, industry, our wastewater treatment plants. So the solution needs to be quite com complex and integrated as well. Stringent regulation of the industrial sector has shown what can be done. Pollution from industry has all but disappeared as a result of the EPA licensing. However, having been ignored for decades, every other element of the water network now needs urgent rethinking and investment. There's been a significant lack of investment in water services over the last 30 years. The local authorities have been put in an invidious position because the rates were taken away from them. They're legally obliged to supply water and to supply wastewater treatment, and yet they're reliant on central government to give them the funding to do that. And that funding just hasn't been forthcoming for them. And what about the water catchments? So the funding for river catchment management, I would say, is even worse than the funding for water services. So what we're looking at now is a situation where only half of our rivers, half of our lakes, and about the same of our coastal waters, are failing to meet the standards required by 2015 for the EU Water Directive, and no plans in place to address that whatsoever. We need to take the bigger picture, Duncan. You know, we need to get everybody working together. Where up to now, we very much worked in our own silos. The local authorities did what they wanted to do. Farmers did what they wanted to do. We need to get everybody working together, everybody sitting down around the table. Our current fragmented governance system just isn't fit to implement the plans. We need a new streamlined system and we need water reform. A recent report before Irish Water was established identified that there's been five billion underinvestment in this area. We're looking at something in the order of five to six billion over the next 10 years being required. Uh, and the challenge will be to find that money. We're depending in the first instance on the customers paying for water and our ability to collect that money. We then have to, uh, with the support of government, to go to the lending institutions and borrow money. And we will have to borrow very significant money, uh, certainly in the early years, in order to bring our, our assets up to the standard that will allow us to provide the service that customers expect and, and should have. I've decided to return to Boyle to meet senior engineer Kieran Madden to find out what has been causing the problem with the local water supply. 
basically uh, the crypto that we've actually found here is a crypto spiridium parvum, which, which, is, which is basically cattle based. So somewhere out in the catchment, we're, we're, we're actually getting slurry spreading, which is actually getting into the actual catchment uh, and, and getting into the water here now. So you have no shortage of water no here? No shortage of water, absolutely no shortage of water. The problem, the problem here is, first of all, as I say, is the crypto. Here, here we only have chlorination and fluoridation as, as, a, as a treatment. Uh, what, we, what we actually need, obviously, is to spend money here to, to put the infrastructure in, to put a full treatment here, to actually put in what we call a cryptosporidium barrier. Water for the town of Boyle is abstracted oh, from two 20 oh, metre boreholes sunk into the aquifer. But runoff no from day. local farms has polluted the catchment. By the end of 2014, the council will have completed work on a new drinking water treatment plant, which will purify the water. This will cost about two million. So, Kieran, when you look at this at a national level, you know, you've got the drinking water issues, you've got the, the leakage problems, unaccounted for water, probably all over the country there's wastewater problems. What, from you as an engineer, how do you feel about all of this? Well, Duncan, it, it frustrates me that we can't get this solved tomorrow. The big problem is the lack of, of money that has been spent on infrastructure for the last 15 to 20 years. Going forward, obviously, people are going to have to pay for water and uh, we need to be able to produce a first-class quality water for them to, to be able to drink. Otherwise, otherwise, um, you know, I mean, we will have people saying that, that they're not going to pay for the water because, because it's not up to standard. Ireland has no choice but to invest in upgrading sewage and water treatment plants to make them fit for the 21st century. At the same time, if we improve the way we manage river catchments, we can reduce the amount of money we have to spend treating water in the first place. It's a perfect example of how making Ireland greener can save money and make our futures brighter. One thing that gives me hope is the environmental outlook of the next generation. I travel to Mayo to meet the children of St. Brendan's in Kilmina. The first winners of the local newspapers get involved competition. Their project focused on water. They visited every house in the area and inspired local farmers to reduce agriculture runoff from their farms and households to reduce the amount of water they used. The change they instigated has been phenomenal. And if someone handed you a glass full of dirty water that had pollutants in it, that animal waste in it, would you like that? No. no. So that's why what you're doing is very important and the message that you're telling your parents is very, very important as well and your neighbours. What it has done is it's raised a massive level of awareness. People now know that it's not just a magic tap that you turn on and water comes out and that the water comes from somewhere. It is a message that we're sending out that we care about our water in the village, we care about water conservation, and even though this is such a local area and a small area in the west of Ireland, we're sending out a message to the entire world that water conservation, water protection is crucial. Kilmina village is on a group water scheme. Uh, the they manage their own water, water supply on a cooperative run. basis. Fully funded and locally operated. All households have had water meters installed and they pay for the amount of water they use. As I have found time and again, those meters have led to a substantial reduction in their water consumption. The same has been found across Europe. When people pay for water, they appreciate how precious it is. We have a fantastic resource here in Ireland in terms of this natural asset and we're the envy of many countries and we all have a part to play that ensures that our water resources are protected. Despite all the challenges we face, I feel optimistic about the next generation. When they take over the reins of the world, I'm confident they will treat it very differently to how we have done in the past. In the meantime, let's all strive to ensure the world that they inherit is still in one piece when they get it.